intact. And we, don't, we God don't take that for granted because many have left their house this morning never to return. But Father, we thank you for keeping us, Lord, for watching over us last night, for keeping us safe, Lord Jesus, and allowing us to wake up this morning in our right minds, able to, to dress ourselves and, and come to worship you this morning with our friends and our family and our loved ones. Father, we just thank you. We love you and we worship you. We honor you. We lift you up for you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Jesus. Abba, Father, the lover of our souls, the keeper of our mind, the one who watches and keeps us, the one who forgives us and, and heals us, the one who loves us unconditionally. Father, we say thank you this morning. Lord God, we ask that you bless those who are on their way. Give them traveling mercies that they may arrive to the house of worship safely. And Father, we ask that you be in the midst of the service this morning, that you would have your way, Lord. That God, you would move all over this sanctuary and that no individual that crosses this threshold, Lord God, would leave the same, that they would have an encounter with you that their lives would be changed and transformed because of your mighty word. Father, we came to hear from you this morning. We came for you to speak into our spirits and speak into our souls and speak into our minds, Lord God. Empower us, Lord God, by your word this morning. Father, we ask that you would set the captive free through your spoken word this morning. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome. Have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to our Facebook family. We are so glad that you joined us this morning. And those who come out into the sanctuary this morning, thank you. God bless you. We're going to ask right now if you could stand while we do our declaration of worship this morning. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. And I don't have it with me, but it should be on the, on the board. I'll say I will, and you'll read the rest because I don't have mine in front of me. So on the count of three, one, two, three, I will. I will renounce all distraction from my worship today. I will give God my best praise today. I will be better and stronger because of my praise today. Amen, amen, amen. I said I will be better and stronger because of my worship and praise today. If you believe that, come on and give God a shout. Hallelujah. I will be better because of my worship and praise today. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. So our worship leader, may, oh, all right, amen, amen. She's on her way. I think she might be stuck in a, a little bit of traffic this morning. So uh, what you want to do, Pastor? You want me to try to do something until she get here? Or? How you gonna do this? <laughs> amen, amen. I love you, Lord, and I live my
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you can. Oh, glory to God. He's in the room. Hallelujah. He's in the room. Jesus. Hallelujah. He's in the room. Hallelujah. I feel his presence all over me. Hallelujah. Yeah, hey God, you're so worthy to be praised. Oh, you're so worthy to be praised. Set the atmosphere, Holy Ghost. Set the atmosphere, Holy Ghost. You're welcome in this place. Hallelujah. There were so many distractions this morning. As we left our houses when we got here, we heard so many different things and things wasn't coming together. People wasn't coming out. My God, my God. But God is so faithful. Hallelujah. He's still worthy to be praised. And as I sat in the car and I was like, my God, Lord, what is going on? I begin to remember that no matter what, hallelujah, he's still with us, hallelujah. No matter what I see, I walk by faith and not by sight. So I pray that you're walking by faith and not by sight this morning. Don't look at what you're seeing, hallelujah. But look up to the hills of what cometh your help because your help cometh from the Lord. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you for your touch this morning. We so appreciate your presence, and we don't take it for granted. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So now we're going to do our welcome, and I just want to say welcome to all those who came out to visit us today, and welcome to our Facebook family and those who chiming in for the first time. We welcome you to Ignite Church of Atlanta. Yeah, Ignite Church of Atlanta. Amen, amen, amen. And we pray that you enjoy yourself. And if you do not have a church home and you're looking for a place to call family, why don't you come and check out Ignite Church of Atlanta here in Riverdale, Georgia. And to our Facebook family, you can share, tell somebody, tune in at 10 a.m. on Sunday to Ignite Church of Atlanta. We would be glad to have you. So welcome, 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 welcome. Amen. Why Ignite? We usually have a short film, a short clip, but I'm just going to tell you briefly about, uh, a little bit about Ignite Church. And Ignite Church is a church that was birthed out of the Flame Ministries, which was founded by my husband, Dr. Uh, Michael Giddens, and myself, Reverend Val Giddens. And the goal of the Flame Ministry was to plant churches both uh, domestically and internationally that address the whole person in God. And so our church here, Ignite Church of Atlanta, is also connected to Lagos, Nigeria, we have a, a partnership with Power of Praise Ministry in Nigeria and also a Bible school there as well. And the whole person is not just a spiritual being, amen? We believe here at Ignite Church of Atlanta that we are relational, we're mental, and we also have an emotional part of who we are. So we believe Christianity is more than a religion. It is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Christianity is more than just you know, uh, a religion, it is a relationship with a real person, amen, by the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, amen. So that's a little bit about Ignite Church, and now we're going to have our announcements. Here at Ignite Church during the week, we have a few Bible studies that you can tune in on. You can tune in at 12 noon on Wednesday for our noonday Bible study which pastor facilitates. They're finishing up the book of Revelations. We are uh, via Zoom only for now, but we probably will be going on Facebook. But it is 12 noon, and you can find the information on our Ignite Facebook page. Also, we have a uh, 7.30 Bible study with um, our very own um, good friend, uh, Minister John, who's helping us out. Amen. Thank God for good health. Hallelujah. Thank God for good health. Amen. And he does our Wednesday night Bible study, which is a Bible study that you engage in conversation. So he's just not talking to you, but you get a chance to ask questions and engage with each other. That's on Facebook and Zoom. You can get that information on our page as well. And then lastly, during the week on Fridays, we have 30 minutes of prayer. Somebody say only 30 minutes of prayer, y'all. I know y'all can do 30 minutes of prayer, amen? amen? 
Amen. Thank you, sis. So, 7.30 on Friday is our very own deacon, Lisa Payton. She leads us into the throne, throne of grace. So we ask that you join us and tell a friend. If you have a prayer request, just type in the comment section. Please pray for me, and we will pray for you every Friday night. Amen, amen, amen. Now is the time where you can sow into this ministry, which I would like to say is good ground. And you have many ways that you can sow into Ignite Church of Atlanta. One is by way of the website, which is at ignitechurchatlanta.org backslash donate. You can also sow by Zell, transformationalflame at gmail.com. We also have a cash app, which is uh, hashtag Ignite Church Atlanta number one. You can also so beloved via PayPal at paypal.me backslash Ignite Church Atlanta. And also we have text to give, and you can text us at 678-210-9030. Amen. And lastly, you can mail. Uh, um, you can mail us at 1441 Woodmont Lane, Northwest Suite 708, Atlanta, Georgia 30318. So those are the ways that you can sow into this ministry if God so uh, blesses your heart to give. And then you can also contact us via our website at ignitechurchatlanta.org and through our email address, which is ignitechurchatlanta at gmail.com. You can also call us at 678-832-0530. And we're, we are on Facebook. Our Facebook page is Ignite Church of Atlanta. And our Facebook family is watching us now on that page. And lastly, you can contact us through Instagram at Ignite Church of Atlanta. Beloved, family, friends, it's giving time. Amen. Hallelujah. I got one sister who loves to give like me. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are going to ask um, if you will govern yourself accordingly um, to our Facebook family. We announce all the ways that you can give into this ministry. And then we are asked of those who are in the sanctuary, if they would like, they can come up. Um, and you can walk past the basket, drop your offering in. And then you can just return to your seat and we'll move on with the service. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, we thank you so much for those who gave, Lord, and those who would like to give, Lord, but didn't have it to give. We thank you, Lord God, that you provide all that we need. We thank you, Lord God, because we know that this is good ground. And I ask in the name of Jesus that, Father, you would help us, Lord God, to be able to meet the needs of Ignite Church of Atlanta. I thank you, Lord God, for what you have planted here. I thank you, Lord God, for uh, the monetary gifts and giving, and I thank you for the prayers, God. And so, Father, we thank you and we ask that you use it to build up your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, if you would please agree with me and say, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. And now, we're going to call our beautiful psalmist up again. And she's going to give us a sermonic selection. We thank you so much, sister, for, for uh, standing here for us today. We appreciate you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah as we prepare our minds and our hearts for the word. I am going to give God total praise. Lord, I will Yeah. 
just stay here in a spirit of worship. Hallelujah. I know there's somebody that got something that you just don't want to thank him for. Because I love him. I don't want to give him some of the praise. Not just the praise and the worship when I feel like it. But the song says that I will give him total praise. With everything that I got. This morning, why don't you just pause right here for worship? Matter of fact, we shouldn't even have to pause. Worship should be a lifestyle. Worship should be continuous. Worship should be what I do. Hallelujah, Lord. I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you open up your mouth and lift up your hands and just worship him where you at? Healings and worship. Restorations and worship. Everything you need is in worship. Because worship is adoration. Worship is bending your heart towards him. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him more today. I love the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And as I worship him, then I start to clap my hands and open up my mouth for them. And I start to thank him. Every hospital I pass, I thank you. Every time I put my key in the door, I thank you. Every time I get gas in my car, I thank you. Every time I look at my bank account, it might not be everything, but it's something I thank you. Yes, I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for keeping my mind. Hallelujah, my mind stayed on. I could have lost my mind many times from the distress and the distractions and the attacks of the enemy that comes against me and the thoughts that try to destroy me. But I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My emotions run wild sometimes. Hallelujah, the way I feel, the way I feel about things, the way I feel things is going. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. You kept me. When my fears and my anxieties try to run rapid with me, I think that I can cast all my cares upon you. Because you can, oh yes, Lord, Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I got so much to be thankful for. I bless the Lord at all times and praise him. Be continuously in my mouth. Do I have a witness here? Somebody say amen. If I got a witness here, somebody shout glory. If you're watching on Facebook Live, just put in your chat box. I glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. Just put, I glorify the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just shout, I see glory all over me. I got glory all over me. Why? Because I'm a worshiper. Hallelujah. You look different when you're a worshiper. You think differently when you are a worshiper. You can go through some things that others fall around because I worship. I'm not ashamed of my worship. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I know they say that hallelujah is the highest praise. Well, I, I beg to differ. Hallelujah is only the higher praise when your attitude goes with your hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. When your posture goes with your hallelujah. Just saying hallelujah is great. Huh? Hallelujah, Jesus. Lucifer even said hallelujah at one time or another. But when I know that he died for me, then I say hallelujah. When I know that he answers my prayers, it's a difference in my hallelujah. When I know that I would not have made it without him, it's a difference in my hallelujah. But when I know that I love him, it's a difference in my hallelujah. Posture must come with your words. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen. As you're standing, why don't we just go right to the text? Hallelujah, the text is coming out of Matthew chapter 13. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Verse 47 to verse 50. 
As you know, we are a kingdom-minded church. Kingdom-minded means it ain't just about playing church. It's not about coming to church. But it's about seeing souls delivered, saved, and transformed by changing our society, being the salt and light of this earth, and growing in our relationship, not just our religion, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to be speaking about the kingdom today. Is that all right? Matthew chapter 13, verse 47 to 50 reads thusly. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into the containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This morning, with the time that is mine, I'll be speaking on the topic, cast your net. Cast your net. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for those who thought it not robbery to worship with us, whether in the sanctuary or whether um, through Facebook Live. We thank you, Lord, for our worship leader that helped bring us into the throne room of the Lord and to the musicians that have played eloquently behind us to point towards you. Lord God, this is the audience of one for your glory, for your honor, for your praise. So, Lord God, speak to our hearts today as you challenge us to cast our net in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let every heart say, Amen, Amen, Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In today's climate, many churches may not open again due to various different reasons. Some of our churches, beloved, are even declining in membership and participation. It appears according to the many statistics that we have read regarding the church, that the church is not growing as rapidly as it should. And I believe that one of the reasons that we are not growing the way we should is maybe we have forgotten how to fish, or we have not even learned how to mend our nets to catch them. Jesus has declared to us that he would make us fishermen of men. And how apropos for this particular season, this COVID season that we're in, a season in which many have not thought that we have to use the internet to minister, the internet to reach out and save. It's a season when we should be primed to cast our nets. Because if we do not, then many of us will remain stagnant. Some of us will even die out and unfortunately will miss our mandate for growth and increase. You see, casting your net can allude to many things, even when your fish could be your very own family that you're trying to catch with the net of the gospel. Casting your net could be a neighbor that you tried to win for Christ. Casting your net might even be your spouse, could be your parent, could be your coworker, and Lord have mercy, casting your net can even be your enemy. No matter how hard it is to catch what is below the surface or what can be difficult to find, we still, even in this season, must cast our nets. And when it gets too hard and the weight becomes too heavy, cast your net and call for help. For God alone knows how to wheel those fish in. You see, God is concerned that they come to the knowledge of Christ. And God is concerned that they come to the knowledge of the gospel. But he's also concerned that we don't stop fishing. Yeah. And that we don't just stop fishing, but we learn that we don't have to fish alone. And we know that we can call out help and the Lord will help us. Somebody say help. help. You see, our text is found in chapter 13 of Matthew's gospel. What I love about Matthew's gospel is Matthew's gospel points to Jesus as king. He is the Messiah that has been promised to come and now he is here ministering. Matter of fact, in Matthew 4, he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven, it is at hand. You see, what I love about 
chapter 13 is that there are seven parables found in chapter 13. And one of the parables is the parable of the sower, which indicate they are the same seeds, but there are different results. Uh, he talks about the parable of the weeds, indicating how the enemy has come in and have sown bad seed in the harvest field. He talks about the parable of the mustard seed and the, the parable of the yeast. And why is he talking about it? He indicates how the kingdom may not look like it won't grow, but if you just wait a little while longer, what is, seems to be insignificant, God has a way to blow it up. Somebody say, I'm about to blow up up in here. And he talks about the parable of the hidden treasure and the parable of the fine pearls, indicating that the kingdom is one that is of extreme value you. As you can see, Jesus is specific in the telling of these particular parables about the nature of the kingdom and who is going to enter in and who will not. And this last parable of chapter 13, in which we will be discussing today, Jesus is talking about a parable of completion. As you know, if it begins, it got to be an end. Amen? Huh? He indicates that no matter what you see, no matter what is going on, there's going to be a final judgment. Lord, I know we don't like to preach about this no more. We don't like to talk about that no more because we just want to be motivated. We just want to be encouraged, and that is good. I want to be encouraged. I want to be motivated. I want to be exhorted. I want to know that all I've been through, God is going to do something great. I want to know all that. But sometimes we got to be reminded of our kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. So Jesus is talking about the parable of the net. Some even call it the fish net. Others call it the drag net. And in this parable in Matthew chapter 13, verse 47 to 50, Jesus is telling the parable of the net to primarily warn of the upcoming judgment day that awaits those who believe and those who don't. You see, you got to make a choice. You ain't going to be able to sit on the sidelines. It's either going to be for him or not for him, but it's going to be a choice. You see, the parable of the net then is a companion to the parable of the weeds. Both these parables indicate that those who refuse to be caught in the net of the gospel is going to suffer eternal damnation. As indicated in Matthew 13 and 1, Jesus used the background of the Lake of Galilee as an occasion to tell a good fish story. How many know that there's a lot of people like to tell a good fish story? Everybody tell you how big a fish they caught. They said that fish was this big, amen, this big, amen. I like the fish too. I go to Costco, I go to Sam's Club, I go to BJ's, I get every type of fish I want. Lord have mercy, amen, amen. He's telling a good fish story, but this fish story deals with eternal consequences. This fish story will catch the attention of many in this particular region. Why? Because many in those re in this region were fishermen. It's interesting to note uh, that when Jesus chose his disciples, uh, he declared that I am going to not just make you powerful. I'm just going to make you anointing. I'm not just going to make you all these different titles that we have right now. Uh, but he says, I'm going to make you fishermen. Lord, have mercy. In other words, you are already fishermen. You already have the qualities. Uh, you know how to catch. Uh, you know how to bait. Uh, you know how to cast your net. Uh, but I must help you cast your net in order to catch men. Yes. Mankind, how many know, is a different type of fish uh, altogether. Yes. They both may be slimy. Uh, they both stink sometimes. Uh -huh. Sometimes they both will eat anything. And how many know they both, man and fish, like shiny things? Uh, but mankind is a different type of fish altogether. Somebody say amen. Uh, he's telling this good fish story to fishermen. He's telling them just as fishermen fish in the Lake of Galilee, so does the Son of Man send his fishermen to catch mankind. It's the same principles, but the consequences are much more different. Come, Jesus says, I will make you fishermen of men. Notice, in antiquity, they had tent makers. They had potters. 
They had stonemasons. They had tax collectors. They had politicians. They had religious folk. They had church folk. You have to ask the question that why would Jesus, out of all the people he could have picked, would have picked uneducated, uncouth fishermen? Lord have mercy. I'm glad you asked. For fishermen knew how to get a catch. Fishermen, you got to understand, were hard workers. In other words, you had to work to fish. The Bible declares that the harvest is plentiful, but what? The laborers, they are what? They are few. Fishermen, in order to sell their fish at the markets, had to speak different languages. That means they had to be able to relate to people to where they are in a language that they can understand. Fishermen had to be self-motivated. Fishermen had to be entrepreneurs. Uh, they had to pay their rent for their boats uh, or rent out their boats to other fishermen so they knew how to make a profit. Uh, they knew how to invest. Uh, we have to ask ourselves, what have, we been and in, what have we been investing in? Is it the kingdom? Fishermen had to be able to endure hardship. They had to go through the seas and the waves and the sun. They had to be steadfast and unmovable because they were after something. Fishermen had to be patient. They had to learn to wait on the fish. Could not get discouraged if things didn't work out according to their timing or their plan. Fishermen had to be able to dive deep down to catch the fish. They could not be afraid to get dirty. They could not be afraid to get amongst the stink. So they were not afraid to get dirty because based on what they had to touch, it was worth it. Fishermen were not afraid to get naked and unclothed. They often would strip off all their clothes to dive into the water and cast their nets. Up. So fishermen were not afraid to be transparent. Wow. Sometimes you got to be all things to win some. Fishermen had to work as a team. To catch the fish in the drag net, which was a large net, it would take at least 15 men to cast the net, and some would row, and some would cast, and some would peel, but all had the sword. They had a kingdom mindset because they knew what they were after. They knew how to share the burden. They knew how to ask for help. They knew how to share the credit, but they also knew that God is going to get the glory. I say, are any fishes in here? If there any fishes in here, put your hands up in the air. Huh? Any fishes for your family? Huh? Any fishes or women for your neighbors? Huh? Any fishermen or fisher women for your co-workers? Huh? I'm here to declare to you today, huh? Jesus is looking for fishermen, but not of fish, but of mankind. Yeah. Matthew 4 and 19 says, come follow me, Jesus says, and I will make you fishers of men. Notice he's out saying, just follow me for your blessing. Just follow me for your healing. Just don't follow me for your benefits. But he's saying, follow me so that you can fish for those who will in turn follow me. This is a kingdom mindset. Hallelujah, Jesus. The scripture tells us in verse 47 that Jesus is concluding his parables of what can we like in this kingdom of heaven? What is his makeup? What is necessary to get in? How valuable is it when you can't see it? He goes on and says that the kingdom is like a net in the Sea of Galilee. The some of you might recall is the Sea of Tiberias. The Sea of Galilee, Pastor Val, has been renowned for fish from ancient times. Why? Because there were 18 different types of species in the Lake of Galilee. They were classified in three different groups. Sardines, viney, and must. Amen. I remember when we went to Lagos, Nigeria, they asked us what kind of fish, um, uh, Minister Danielle, that we needed. And I said, well, I said, what you got? They said that we got some sardines. I said, child, how you going to feed somebody on some sardines? Because we used to sardines like this. Well, child, Minister John was with us. They dropped that sardine on that plate. And that sucker was like this. I said, what kind of sardine? That's a man eater. But there were three types of fish, or groups of fish, that were in the Lake of Galilee. Sardines, viney, and musk fish. So the fishermen had to be very specific in the fish that they were after. 
because they could not just eat everything and anything if it was unclean. In other words, they knew the tendency and the characteristics of what they were after. And we too must be aware of what and who we are after. So when we're casting our net, we must be aware of what kind of fish that we're trying to catch. Sometimes we will get stink and hot under the collar, tired of waiting. I remember people would tell me it's so relaxing to go and fish. Well, I didn't find it relaxing the one time that I went. I sat out there. First of all, I wasn't getting up four day in the morning catching a fish. I went at noon. And I threw my net. First of all, I wasn't, they, they said you got to bait the bait, the, the hook with the worm. I said, first of all, the devil is a liar. I ain't doing that. So we went and got some frozen fish from the bait shop, the thing that ain't move. And I threw that thing out there, and I said, they got 10 minutes. If I ain't catch no fish, ain't no sense staying out. I was hot. I was tired. The sun was all up in my grill. And I threw the thing out, and the thing got hooked, the hook got hooked up all in the rocks and the thing. And the man had to go down there and take the hook out and show me how to cast. Just because you know about fish and don't know, you don't mean you know how to cast. So, Reverend Val, I hooked that thing, making sure I ain't hooked nobody behind me, and I threw it. I had to be taught how to do this thing. And I threw that thing out there, and, and I said, I ain't throwing it no more. If it ain't catching nothing, it ain't catching nothing. And lo and behold, after 10 minutes, John, I caught a fish. And just because I caught the fish don't mean you know how to roll them in. See, I had to learn that if you go too fast, if you go too fast, you might lose them. But if you go too slow, you got to have the right, you got to know, oh, Lord, I feel this. You got to know right, hallelujah. And I pulled and I wheeled that fish in, but just before I got him up to the dock, because I wasn't going in no water, just because we got up to the dock, the fish fell down in the rocks. And they said, that's a good fish. It was a flounder. And, that, and they said, I said, well, he going to be down there today because I surely ain't going down there. <laughs> and this, this man that I did not know climbed down there, got my fish, and put it in there. And you would think that would motivate me to go fish no more. I said, no, I had enough of this. <laughs> but what am I trying to tell you? Sometimes the fish we after, even though when we do catch them, don't get impatient. Listen to the Holy Spirit so that you know when to pull, when to let it go. When to pull, when to let it go. And even when you look like they're getting close and something comes and they fall off that hook, notice that just like that man helped me get that fish off them rocks, God will send somebody to help them get them right back up there. Y'all hear what I'm trying to say? Hallelujah, Jesus. There were two stories of Jesus involving this must fish. You see, when winter would come, the must, which was a tropical fish, would congregate in the northern part of the lake because they were attracted to the warm water of the springs, rising at the foot of the Aramis Hill flowing into the lake. The problem is that because they like the warm part of the spring uh, of the of the lake, this attraction was fatal because now it offered the fishermen an opportunity to catch them. So we also must know what we're fishing for, and we must be knowledgeable of what they are attracted to. It was probably here that Jesus saw this fish that he told Peter to let down his net, and Peter let his net down and got a successful haul. Understand also in the spring, the musk couple often would lay their eggs on the bottom of the lake. And after fertilization, they would put the, the, they would put the eggs into the mouths of the parents. And the parents would hold those fertilized eggs in their mouths for not one week, not two weeks, but for three weeks until they hatch. And then they, after they hatch, they would watch over them for a few days 
but to prevent those fish from being comfortable or coming back into the mouths of their parents, the fish now would take rocks and pebbles in their mouth, and sometimes they will take coins to ensure that what was comfortable to the fish at one time is no longer comfortable for them now. Do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, sometimes we got to let trouble come into the lives of those that we're after and make them uncomfortable for they to see uh, that the place they need to be uh, is not trying to do their own thing, uh, but they got to find Jesus on their own. Yeah. Woo, Lord have mercy. My God, sometimes we got to let trouble come. Amen? So that they understand the one that can help them with their troubles is Jesus. Am I talking to somebody here? Some of y'all been after some fish for a long time. Some of you sleep with them. Some of you feed them. Some of you work with them. Some of you live next door to you. You've been after this fish a long dog on time. Long time. Long time. It looks like when you wheel them in, they're getting close. But just when they, they know they got to change, they fall right off. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I know some of y'all know what I'm talking about this morning. I was determined I wasn't going to get up here and hoop today. I wanted to teach. Amen. We let Minister John get up here and hoop. We wait for him to roll around on the floor one day. But he ain't going to mess up his outfit. Left. Lord have mercy. What I love about the fish is one of the oldest symbols in Christianity. The Greek word for fish is an acoustics, acrostics that means Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. You will see this symbol pervasive in Christian art and literature. You will see it in mosaics in Christian churches. And when we was in Israel, we would see this fish, this fish symbol. It's a wall paintings and catacombs of Rome on glasses and cups and monuments and all parts of the Roman world. You would see this fish symbol. And the symbol of the fish was not just to show a symbol, but it was used by persecuted Christians as a code name for Christ in order for them to avoid execution and arrest by the Roman authorities. So when they would see this picture of the fish outside of a Roman home, it would mean that the Lord's Supper, hallelujah Jesus, would be observed that night. Notice they presented Christ, but they changed how they presented Christ. Because if they used the cross symbol, they would have invited intact. But they used the fish symbol and still preached Jesus. What is I'm saying? Sometimes we must change the way we present the gospel, but we are never to change the message of the gospel that Jesus Christ is Son of God, Savior. What is so special about this fish? When you look at it, there's three different ways in which you can catch fish during antiquity. The first way, way you catch fish is that you can spare the fish. In other words, you get the spear and you just throw, hallelujah, the spear into the fish. And sometimes when we are trying to catch our fish, when we're trying to catch them with the net of the gospel, we got to spare them. Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Not spare them the truth, but tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Tell them that time is too short to wait any longer. We got to tell them the hard, cold fact. If you don't get your life together right now, today, you're in danger. I remember back in the day, even though I'm only 29 and a half years old, normally we have communion Sunday on the first of the, of the, of the, or first Sunday, and we will be getting to that soon here at Ignite Church. Uh, and since it ain't communion Sunday, then I can tell it the way I want to tell it. I'm only 29 and a half years old. So if a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But I remember there used to be a, a sign, what was it? Uh, 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 it was, used to be a picture on TV, and the robot would go, danger, danger, danger. What was that show? Somebody else is 29 and a half years old. Yeah! It was lost in space. 
And every time something comes, he ain't say what is happening. He ain't tell him what was going on. He just said, listen here, danger, danger, danger. Sometimes we ain't got time for all the fluff. See, nowadays everybody's sensitive. You can't just say it the way you want to say it now. But you remember there was a Jesus and there was a John the Baptist, amen? And, and Jesus had a parable and he talked about the parable of the marketplace. I came with you with joy and happiness and you didn't get that. Then I came with you in the funeral, you ain't get that. You know that sometimes there's different ways that we have to come at you. Sometimes we got to use sweetener and sometimes we got to come straight with the vinegar. Yeah. Get your life together. Stop playing around. Look at this season that we're in. How many people thought that they were gonna be here a long time? Then COVID came. Time is not in your hands. Amen. Get to Jesus now. I know this ain't a message a lot of people want to hear, but I got to preach the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Number one, you spare your fish. Amen. Number two, you can cast your net. This was a smaller net because casting the net, the fishermen would drop the net over the fish and then they would dive into the water and secure the net at the end of the end of the net uh, end of the uh, net to cap to trap the fish. So what they had to learn to do is they caught the fish unaware that they were being caught. We so busy quoting scripture at folk, amen, that we don't realize that the scripture ain't going to grab them. It's the love. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Love draws them into the net. They don't even realize they're being caught. Amen. Love brings them into that. Your religion ain't going to bring them into the net. Relationship is going to bring them into the net. Y'all hear what I'm trying to say? The fishermen had to know exactly where the fish were. That means you had to observe the fish. I know you like to go over there to that liquor store right there and get that old gold and, and get your weed over there. I'm going to wait right after that. When you're feeling good in the spirit, I'm going to talk to spirit. I know I've been trying to get you to church on Saturday, so you're going to play sick around 11.59 p.m. on Saturday. Amen. And I know when I, if I snip up, I'm going to come home early from church. And I'm going to hear all the ludicrous and all them boys playing on the radio because you got well all of a sudden right after I left. I know you want to back that thing up on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, but I'm going to back this Bible up right when you go. We both on. Because I observe you. Amen. But I'm not going to condemn you. I'm going to love you. Because that's what he did to me. And sometimes we forget how he caught us. <laughs> and that's why my testimony has credibility. When I tell them that I was just as foul as you at one time, I played the same games as you at one time, but Jesus cleaned me up and turned my life around. My marriage was messed up. My life was messed up. I, I thank God because you got to observe them. Not this one. Say it, Pastor Val. Amen. You've been blessed. Straighten it up. My wife told me, make sure I straighten it up. You know, she prayed for this. She prayed for all of this. Y'all see her? She be getting me on Facebook all the time. And this is when I get her back over the pulpit. Amen. All of this is yours, baby. You prayed for this. Amen. I was your knight in shining armor riding in a Nissan Maxima. Amen. <laughs> I told you we like to have fun. Amen. Amen. We a little different. What we are up here, we the same way when we come down there. Lastly, in accordance with the parable, you had to cast a drag net. A drag net was a much larger net. It had weights on the bottom and it had floats on the top, so it would make a wall. So no matter what comes in the net, it was not specific in what is caught because the net, the drag net, was specific to catch everything. Amen. So when you use a drag net, you were not specific in what you caught. Anything in the way of the net was going to be caught. So all types of fish were caught in the net, and you needed many people, at least 15 in one boat, maybe two boats, and some on the shore to use the drag net. So when you are fishing for your catch, you realize that the catch is never dependent on you, but is dependent on him. That he tells us to cast our net, but we never know what he's going to allow us to catch. The Bible says one plant 
one waters, but God causes the increase. So all types of fish were caught in the dragnet. So when you cast your net, you may catch fish that are quite different from you. Some from a different ethnicity, some from different social classes. Some for different economic background. Some for different theological points of view. Some with different cultural preferences. Some who had no clue of Jesus until you told them about Jesus. And some who had a negative, a negative experience in church, but never had a positive experience with Jesus Christ. You ought to catch them. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. We let them know there's healing in the net. There's deliverance in the net. There's salvation in the net. There is hope in the net. But in spite of all, Jesus desires us to catch them in the net because he wants to love them and he wants to give them life. Notice what I love about this. Jesus didn't say if the net gets full. He says, but when it gets full. It's an indication if you throw your net out, if you have the patience to wait on it, if you throw your net out and they're prayerful, allowing God to give you the strategy for catching the fish, if you are willing to get dirty and, and be amongst the stink things and even the stench of sinful lives, he's saying your net will be full. You will bring them to shore. Better yet, you will bring them to Jesus Christ. You will see that one of the reasons that you are here for is to show the light of Jesus Christ so, so that they would be saved and delivered and free. Cast your net and bring them to shore and let Jesus sort it out. Stop trying to worry about who is, who is worthy to come and who's not worthy. We ain't all worthy to come unto Jesus Christ. We don't know who's good and bad. We we know only Jesus knows who's the good and bad. But catch them. Notice Jesus says that they caught the fish, they sort them out, they threw, they put the good in the containers, and yet they threw the bad ones out. Stop trying to discern who's the good ones and the bad ones. Some of the bad ones you think ain't gonna be in heaven is gonna be the ones right there opening the door for you to get in. You see, they had the the fishermen had to count the fish when they brought them to shore. For tax purposes. Amen. They wanted to make sure that each party received his due. And what I love about this is fish had to be sold while the water still remained on them. And sometimes we as churches don't want the fresh fish because they're harder to catch. The fresh fish are those who don't want to come to church. The fresh fish who have never been saved. The fresh fish who want nothing to do with Jesus. But that is how the kingdom is going to grow. So we must not, as a church, be so comfortable with just happy with transferring membership from other churches. But we must be sad and be satisfied that we're growing as a church in the kingdom. No, we must want the fresh fish. Amen. Those who have may never have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ because time is short. We must not lose our taste for fresh fish. Yes. Come on now. Somebody say amen. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Notice he says the angels are the one. Yes. Jesus is going to send the angels to take the big, the bad from the good. But what does he want us to do? Cast your net. And if you haven't cast in a long time, because after a while your net becomes dry and rotted. Amen. That's why a lot of our churches are dying. The nets is dried and rotted because they're so busy. And then they walk out the doors and don't even know the community they serve. The net starts to get rotted. But you still got time. To mend your net. You can dry it and wash it and restore it and then get the help of the Holy Spirit to cast it. Catch somebody. Catch someone. Don't let your life go on and nobody knew how much you love Jesus. The worst thing in the world is somebody perish because you didn't tell them. Cast your net. You might not catch who you desire to catch, but somebody might catch somebody you've been after. And if you don't cast, how will they get caught? If you don't preach, how can they hear? Don't worry about your ordination papers. Sometimes people got ordination not by anointing but appointment. Ooh, come on, say that one more time, one more time. Say it again. 
Not everybody that got papers is anointed. They got anointment, but not anointing. Who do you love? Who are you willing to serve when these lights are out? What if they took your title out away from you? Will you still cast your net? Time is short. First Corinthians 3 lets us know that every work that we have is going to be put to the test. But Lord, I preached a good sermon. And Lord, I wore black and white and carried my Bible with a big cross. And did you tell somebody? Your child been a hellion for 15 years in your house, but you broke the church doors down every day. Your husband can't even, even understand how you love Jesus when you talk to him so bad. Cash your net. The people on your job said you're one of the most nastiest people on the job. You come late all the time and get mad and call the devil a lie, but you're the biggest devil in the office. Cast your net. See, I think one of the reasons we don't like to cast our net because we have to be a fisherman that look like him. And when you're a fisherman that look like him, that means you can't stay who you are. The challenge is to all of us, and me, myself included, cast your net. I just want to, before we conclude, we just gonna start to pray. I wanna pray for revival. I want to pray for our community. I want to pray for our families. I want to pray for some laborers. And I want to pray that we can be kingdom minded. Just like those fishermen that were casting a dragnet, it took a team. It took people coming together, being kingdom minded. Amen. So I asked a few people to come and, and just pray for some of the things that I asked. And I'm going to ask. Uh, Minister Minister Antoine and to come and pray for revival and after that his beautiful wife Minister Danielle to pray for our community. I'm going to ask Pastor Val after that to come pray for our families and then I'm going to ask Minister John to come pray for our lab for laborers and I'll conclude with praying for being kingdom minded. Come on brother. to everyone. Praise God. What a word. Yes. Casting our net. Yes. That's what we call to do every day. Yes. That's what you're called to do if you're a Christ follower to cast your net. Yes. Pray with me. Command all demons and demonic spirits to leave now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Holy Spirit, let it be all of you and none of me. So I want to pray for revival. So I will pray for Reverend Val and Dr. Eve as you continue to guide them, open the doors of Unite Atlanta Church. Lord, you sent them here from New York to come to Atlanta to plant this church here, Lord. They were doing great where they were at, but you sent them here. You sent them here to the city of Atlanta, Lord, to do your work, to do your bid. Lord, I just pray that you continue to guide them and strengthen them, Lord. Continue to open the doors that's needed to bring forth your ministry. This is your ministry, Jesus, to bring forth your word and bring forth your truth, Lord. And I just pray that you cover a head of protection over this church, that you continue to bring in the right people to help them build your ministry, Lord. They need you, Lord. They are here because of you, not because of them. And Lord, we just ask all these things in your son's name. Amen.
command you back to the pit of hell when you came yes. to God in Jesus' perfect and powerful name. For Jesus. all, all power and authority has been given to us yes. as the children of God. Hallelujah to Jesus. For God, Jesus himself, according to Luke 10, 19, Jesus. I have given you authority and power to trample over serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy so nothing can harm you. So brothers and sisters, let's stand as a community for unity in the name of Jesus, for the kingdom and the glory of God in Jesus' name. Hey, Holy Spirit, you send your angels to stand and camp around us, to cover us, to keep us in the spirit of war. Hallelujah to Jesus. For all, all victory has been given to us through Jesus Christ. In his powerful name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Father, we come right now together as a family, praying for families, Lord. God, you know all about each and every one of our families. You know about families all across this world. God, so many families are being attacked by the enemy during this time. But God, we know that your word, Lord God, when it goes forth, it does not return void. So we send your word, Lord God, to every family who might be suffering during this time. Lord God, and we speak hallelujah, abundance, Lord God, and provision, Lord God, to each and every family. God, we pray for family members who do not know who you are, Lord. We pray, God, if it's not us, God, that you send somebody in their lives, Lord, Jesus, to present you to them, Lord God. God, we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would touch those in the families who are lost, who need healing, Lord God, who just need to know that there is a Savior who is waiting, hallelujah, for them to receive them as Lord and Savior in their lives. God, I pray for my family members personally, Lord God. I got family members, Lord, that know who you are, but they walked away from you, Jesus. But Lord God, I ask that you would arrest them right now, Lord God, wherever they may be. Draw them back to you, God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. That, Lord God, that as we begin to go out, Lord God, in this community, Lord God, and, and even in our homes, Lord God, that, that we look at other people's family as our families, Lord God. That we love on them like they're our family, Lord God. That we care about them like they're our family, Lord God. We may not be dead by blood, God, but we are family. So, God, I thank you right now for how you're going to raise up the family, how you're going to bind the families back together, build relationships, restore relationships again, Lord God. We thank you right now, and we bless you, we honor you, and we lift you up, and we glorify you. But we know that you are turning things around already in families, Lord God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Father, we bless your name today, Lord God. Your word says the, uh, uh, the workers are plentiful, but the laborers, the laborers are few. So, Lord God, right now in this hour, Lord God, we ask that you send workers, laborers, to your vineyard called Ignite Church of Atlanta. Lord God, we ask that you send them from the north, the south, the east, the west. Lord God, no matter what they look like, Lord God, no matter what they, uh, uh, where they are in their spiritual walk with the Lord, Lord, Lord God, we ask that you send them to this place, Lord God, with work working on their mind, Lord God. We ask that you send them with no ego. Lord God, wherever you lead them, Lord God, in this vineyard, Lord God, we ask that you send them with a spirit and willingness to work in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We ask that you send uh, uh, just people with your spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, people that are willing and able uh, to get in and lift the heavy burdens of starting this church, Lord God. We ask that you touch the leadership, Lord God. We ask that you allow them to delegate the work, Lord God, so they're not taking it all on themselves, Lord God. We pray that burnout never happens to the leadership of this church, Lord God. And we ask for increase, increase, increase all over this house, Lord God. Increase in the finances, Lord God. Increase in, uh, in, 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 in just the, the community, not only uh, in, in, in this church, but around us, Lord God. We ask that you build up the city of Riverdale in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for this light uh, of Zion. We thank you for this leadership. Thank you for planting the kittens in this area, Lord God. You sent them to a community, Lord God, to lift up this community and be a light on a hill. And we thank you for that, Lord God. Thank you for sending them this way in the name of Jesus. We pray for a cut.
covering over their lives and a covering over this church, Lord God. And, and touch uh, touch apostle, Lord God. Touch, touch the church that comes after us, Lord God. Bless them with a mighty blessing in the name of Jesus. This is our prayer, Lord God, and we decree and declare that it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Determined to be kingdom minded. We're not looking to build your church. Your church is what you build. Your church is what you started. We are just following your mandate. So help us, Lord God, to be humble, to be led, to serve, and to be kingdom minded. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. And we glorify you now. For those who are so interested, next Sunday we're going to hit them streets. Amen. We're going to be prayer walking after service on next Sunday. We got all these houses over here, all these houses over there, people walking to and from. We're going to be praying for them. Invite them to church, but more importantly, invite them to Jesus. If you want to be a part of that, just let us know, and we will go out together. And you might say, "Well, I'm not here in Atlanta, but I'm." But you got a, you got an internet. You can share. You can share our services. You can share the gospel with somebody. But what I challenge you to do is cast your net. Your net is wherever you are. Make a difference for the kingdom. Don't let it always be about what God is doing for you, but what are you willing to do for God for the benefit of those that you're trying to catch? It might be someone who has listened to this message and someone who has worshiped with us who have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Jesus wants to change your life if you let him. He just said, why don't you come? Just come. Don't worry about what you look like, what you ain't going through, what you're doing. God knows how to clean you up, just like fish. <laughs> Hallelujah. It don't always smell that great, but once it's cleaned up, Jesus can clean you up. All he wants you to do is say yes. He died for you. He died for me because he loves us. Why don't you come to his love? If you are feeling that this is what you need to do this morning, and I pray that you do, all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died for you. So why don't you just say this simple prayer with me? Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me whole. Forgive my sins. I believe you're the son of God. You died for me. Now live in me through your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord God. I believe you. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have said that prayer for the very first time, then in our chat, just put in there, I have accepted the Lord Jesus. And we'll reach out to you and we'll pray for you. And we'll show you how you can continue this journey which is the best decision of your life. If you need a church home, if this is a place where you feel that the Lord is leading you, then whether you're in the sanctuary or whether you're on the internet, you can say, you know what? I want to be a part of this. Amen. I want to be a part of this. I believe this is a place where not only I can grow, but I can help and I can serve and I can use what God has given me so that we all together can make a difference for the community. If that's your testimony, all you have to do is put it in the chat box. I want to be here. If you're here, you can just say, I want to be here in this sanctuary. So God, we thank you. We thank you for our worship leader. Angel, God bless you, sweetheart. Thank you for ministering. Amen. You got here. And when you got here, you got here. Amen. So we thank you so very much. Thank you, my brothers. As we get ready to leave this place, if you will just stand as we get ready for the benediction.
for those of you who don't know, we, we have a ministry and a school in Lagos, Nigeria, and we're going to be teaching on church growth and um, and um, and the, um, psychology um, beginning the month of August. If you ever wanted to be a part of a, a class from Lagos, Nigeria, let us know, and we can invite you in, and you can see what it's like to be in Lagos teaching pastors um, about church growth and psychology. We've been doing this now for the past three years. And this is a part of casting your net. You never know who you're going to catch. Amen. And uh, we're just honored to what God is doing. I'm going to ask Pastor Val that she would come and give us a benediction. And even though we are getting ready to leave this place, we're not leaving his presence. God, we thank you for what we heard today, all the things that were said. We just bless you and honor you. And God, we take it all in and we're going to meditate on it and then we're going to share this with others, God, because it's been so good for us to partake and eat of such a wonderful message today. So God, we ask that you be with us as we go our separate ways, that we continue to show the love of Jesus Christ wherever we go, that we touch somebody's life today, God. We thank you for being here. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for being in the service. And we just ask that you keep us for the rest of the day. In Jesus' precious name we say, amen, amen, amen. amen.